Today, we talk about my wish list for sneakers. All right, so I really don't want to belabor this, so let's just get right into it. First up, Kobe won 81 points, AKA the Nike Kobe, the first Nike Kobe, the first signature sneaker by Nike for Kobe, where he scored 81 points. I need that shit. Next, the Crazy 8s, the Adidas Crazy 8s, which they used to call the KB8s, which I believe they now call the Crazy 8s. I don't care what the fuck you call them, Adidas. Re-release them shits in the OG colorway, in the OG body style. I'm about that shit. It's over. Okay? All right, cool. Next, uh, while we're on that note, I want the Kobe, the Kobe 2, the fucking Audi TT inspired Kobe shits, the microwave shits, or, you know, whatever you want to call them. I think them shits is hot. I would rock the fuck out of the Kobe 2s. I think they look OD. Spaceship, Space Toast, Toaster Strudels, Pop-Tarts looking motherfucking shits. I'm about that life, okay? Kobe's my guy. Get that shit to me, Adidas. Let's go! Next, we got the LeBron 4 Fruity Pebble. So, uh, spoiler alert, but I got a little video coming up of a little bit of an unboxing about my LeBron Collezione being complete. The only exception to that is the LeBron 4. Now, there were some selections I had at my disposal in my size to complete the LeBron set but I wanted to hold out because the LeBron 4 Fruity Pebble holds a special place in a lot of people's hearts. Fruity Pebbles, not my favorite cereal, but if it's LeBron's favorite cereal and it's a LeBron signature model and it's the first time LeBron ever featured it on a signature model, you gots to get that shit. So I'm gonna hold off. I'm not gonna tell you which boutique I have my eye on to get that shit because I don't want you buying that shit before I get to it, but I'm gonna cop that shit once I build up my net worth a little bit more. Because I bought a fuck ton of sneakers recently. Stay tuned. Okay. Next. The Air Max 1 Pada Pada Cherrywood. That shit is gorgeous. And to be honest with you, I think this is kind of like a soft add to the list. Because I have a fuck ton of dope additions to the Air Max 1 collection. Next. Uh, the Air Mag 2016, not that 2011 bullshit or 2009, whatever the fuck that was. That shit looks disgusting. The 2016 shit, on the other hand. Now we talking. Auto lacing was the entire premise behind that shoe. So to own anything but that model is a disgrace, in my opinion. Now, the shoe, you know, it goes for a pretty, 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 pretty... Big penny, okay? You know, I can't afford it right now, but in the next year to two years, I can afford it. So please, no one buy it so I can get it. And you can also miss me with that bullshit of uh, the Hyper Adapts, okay? Because the Hyper Adapts to me are just a dumbed down version of the Nike mags. And if I'm gonna get an auto lacing pair of sneakers, it's gonna be the 2016 mag, I'm sorry. Along with the fact that despite its release date, those sneakers were originally gifted to Michael J. Fox on the anniversary, I shouldn't even say anniversary, on the date that was suggested within the movie for those shoes to actually be out. So, historic piece, I really do want it. Please let me get it. Guys, if you're watching this and you're rich as fuck and you're some Dubai prince or some fucking rich Saudi prince or some shit, guys, come on, man. I need those sneakers. I got nothing else in life. That's, that's actually a lie, but I need the sneakers to feel good. Make me feel good, please. Don't buy those sneakers. Anyway, let's get to going. Okay, let's get to going. Next up, this one's easy. The uh, Jordan 4 Black Cements. Now, I bought the Jordan 4 White Cements recently just because I feel like I couldn't pass on them. Just such a beautiful classic shoe. Uh, but the black cements, if I had to choose any Jordan 4 model, that's the one. So I can't wait for that to release. Please, Nike, don't limit that shit. Like, I'm just annoyed with that stuff. Like, we all want it. Just give it to us. Just give it to us. You released a fuck ton of Space Jams and we bought them all. Just release the same amount of Jordan 4 black cement. Anyway, okay, moving on. Next, the Jordan 6 Infrared. And I'm talking about the one with the Nike Air. Now, the comforting thing here is when that originally released, it was 2014, it didn't have the Nike Air on the back. 
and now we're in 2018. So I believe by 2019, if not 2020, we should get that Jordan 6 infrared back in an OG style with the Nike Air on the back. Oh my God. The first time we saw a lace lock. Actually, no, wasn't that the, wasn't that the Jordan 5? I'm going to have to refresh my history. It's been a while, but I, I might want to say it was the Jordan 6, if not the first, definitely the second model with a lace lock on the shoe. And even if it wasn't the first time a lace lock was on a Jordan model, that lace lock on the Jordan 6 infrared is so beautiful. It adds so much to that shoe, coupled with the tongue, coupled with the entire silhouette and colorway, just I can't say enough about that shoe. I cannot wait for that thing to come back with a Nike Air on the back, okay? All right, cool. All right, next. Oh, the Jordan 7 Raptor slash playoffs, whatever you want to call them. So everyone calls the Jordan 7 with the uh, purplish bits on them, the Jordan 7 Raptors. And totally, uh, honestly, in my opinion, totally understandable that we call them the Raptors because A, that's the nickname and that's just what people grew up calling it. Secondly, uh, clearly the purple gives you an ode back to the Raptors, okay? And I love Raptors, I'm a big dinosaur fan, if you haven't noticed. With that said, the reason I want that colorway specifically, I held off on the Bordeaux's. I held off on the hairs. Everyone says the hairs are the one to have if you're gonna have one pair of Jordan 7s. I completely disagree, all right? The reason I disagree, is because when you look at Jordan's history and what he played in, he played in that pair of Jordans and he did something human beings couldn't believe he did. And that was score all those three pointers on Portland. And then the infamous the shrug, okay? This is serious business, okay? This is some serious shit. And the reason I say that specifically is because not only does it add to Jordan's legacy, but A, he wasn't known as a three-point shooter, especially in that part of his career. And B, my game specifically, I'm all about that shit. Three-pointers are my shit, okay? Next, the Jordan 14 last shots. Now, these are rumored to be coming out in uh, June, which would coincide with the 20th anniversary of when Jordan took his last shot, AKA the last shot with the Bulls. But uh, clearly I need a pair of 14s and uh, that's the one I'm gonna get. Now, with that said, I'm pretty tight. I'm pretty mad at you, Jordan. I'm fucking mad at you, Michael. This guy was rocking the 13 the entire year and then all of a sudden for the finals, just for the finals, he decides, you know what? Fuck it. I'm trying to debut these Ferrari inspired motherfuckers. And now we have 14 classic Jordans instead of 13. So now I gotta buy this extra pair of 14th uh, Jordans and they're probably gonna be limited and I'm probably gonna spend a buttload of money and uh, that makes me mad. So uh, thanks, Michael. Next, the Air Max 270 in a good colorway. And what I mean by this is uh, I'm just really not impressed and I'm gonna make a separate video about this, but bottom line is I'm, I'm really not impressed with the 270 so far. And I know I want a pair and I know I'm gonna get a pair. It's just a matter of which pair. I always try to stick to the best pair possible, especially in the contemporary era. But uh, so far, not impressed. And uh, we'll get to that in a future video. Next, the Air Max Plus in the original Tiger colorway. Now, they recently released an Air Max Plus in that Tiger colorway, but it was an ultra version, which I don't understand this ultra version bullshit. I really don't want to get into it right now, but you can miss me with all that bullshit. Give me the OG retro Tiger colorway of the Air Max Plus. Uh, if for no other reason than the fact that the entire premise of the Crooked Tongues brand is based on the fact that the Air Max Plus had a crooked tongue. And I love tigers, especially Siberian tigers. And, uh, yeah, that's about it. I mean, should, do I need any other reasons? Get the fuck out of here, Scott. Like, oof. Anyway, all right, next. The Air Max 360. So this is just a matter of completing the Air Max pack, making sure I have all the relevant Air Maxes. There's a bunch of Air Maxes that aren't relevant in my opinion, but the Air Max 360, I think qualifies as a relevant Air Max that I need in my collection. We'll get into it whenever Nike decides to retro it because we all know they're gonna retro it. Uh, and we'll talk about it then. So um, 
stay tuned. Next, the Pigeon Dunks, the Nike Pigeon Dunks. Now, I fucked up here, okay? This shouldn't be on my list, but there's a reason why it's on my list. So, not too long ago, sometime last year, someone posted a size 11 pair of Nike Dunks in the Pigeon colorway. And I didn't jump on it because I was under this impression that I was going to make this perfect vlog and go down there and get featured on Flight Club Snapchat back when they were relevant, am I right? Like, you're done, Flight Club. It's over. Uh, but back then they were relevant still. So uh, I had this big vision in my head of what was going to happen. And I didn't want to blow my load. So uh, I waited. And waiting was stupid, especially for a pair as iconic as those Nike Pigeon Dunks. So I missed out. Now, I do have the uh, Puma Pigeons, but they don't hold a slimmer of a candle compared to those Nike Dunk Pigeons. So, I'm hoping I'll come across another pair sometime soon, hopefully for somewhere around that same price range of eight grand, which sounds ridiculous, but that's how much they were going for. And at this rate, I, I wish I would pulled the trigger at that time, and I didn't. So, at this rate, whenever that sort of sizing of a pair pops back up on eBay, I'm going to be screwed because I imagine it'll be at least that much, if not more, but we'll see. Hopefully not. Now, the alternative to that is Greg Streets. If you're watching this, either now or in the future at some point, Greg, if you can bless me with one of your fucking 50 pairs of Nike Pigeon Dunks, I would be fucking appreciative, okay? You don't need that many pairs of Pigeon Dunks. I, don't even give it to me. Just sell it to me. Just sell it to me. I need them shits. And you don't need them. You got them already. You don't need that many pairs. Give me a fucking pair of Pigeon Dunks. Fuck you. I say that with love. You're the shit. I respect you in the sneaker game. Without you, I wouldn't know as much as I know now about sneakers. So don't take it personal, Greg. I'm just, I'm just really mad. I'm just really mad I don't have the Nike Pigeon Dunks. That's what happens when you don't have a pair of Nike Pigeon Dunks. You get, you get pissy. Okay. So uh, the fact that you have like what eight pairs or whatever, just. Just hook me up. I'll pay for it. And you don't even need the money, but I'll pay for it. Or I'll donate to a charity or whatever Whatever the fuck we can work out. We'll, we'll figure it out. Just just give me a pair of Nike Pigeon Dunks, okay? All right, thanks, man. Anyway, moving on. Next, the Nike Pegasus. Now, I do have a pair of the Nike Air Pegasuses in those... <laughs> Pegasus, uh, in the OG colorway. But the problem was I was in such a rush in my initial parlay into sneakers that I bought a size too small and and I bought it without the box which I never do I never ever 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 buy a pair of sneakers without the box it's just a cardinal sin for me personally the box is just as important to the sneaker as anything else and uh and I fucked up so I got desperate and I got greedy and I bought a pair of those air pegasus in the OG grayish blue slate colorway without a box in a size that doesn't even fit me. I can squeeze in through them shits, but it's not comfortable, and I really don't know why I did that, but I did it, and I'm just hoping that uh, Nike retros that pair sometime soon, so. Itty what it is. Next, the Reebok Question Mid. Now, this also falls into that regret category. So, uh, way back when, when I started collecting sneakers, I just went all the fuck out, all right? And what happened was uh, I ended up buying a pair of Reebok questions. These were the OGs, but when they arrived, I realized I was in such a rush buying like, at that time, I forget what other sneakers I was buying around that time, but I bought so many sneakers in such a short amount of time that I didn't even realize that I had just bought a pair of low top Reebok questions and not the mid top OGs. So. I'm just gonna have to swallow that bullet. And I'm not gonna wear them. Maybe I'll feature them as a as a giveaway pair, which I don't even know who the fuck would want those things. But at this point, uh, I'm, I'm just not even gonna wear them. They're still dead stock, and I'm just gonna wait till I get the, uh, you know, mid top. Next, the OG Ewing. So I want a pair of OG Ewings in that Nick colorway. Now, I'm not a Knicks fan. I really don't give a shit about the Knicks colorway. It's kind of popping with the orange and the and the blue, but it's not something I rock very often. But if I was gonna rock it, I would rock it on a pair of Ewings. Not because I think him, the center, was OD, which granted, I'm not a fucking basketball player, right? So who the fuck am I to complain about a basketball player in the NBA not being OD? Like, that guy was, to, in some people's opinions, the greatest center of all time. At least as far as Knicks fans go, right? But in my opinion, the, the main reason I want a pair of Ewings is because that's his brand. He decided to branch out and create his own brand 
and create his own sneaker in a time where it wasn't that popular. Like to leave juggernauts like Nike, Adidas, Converse, etc., to make your own brand. That's just that's just ballsy. And uh, this was in the pre big baller brand era where you're making your own sneakers. Okay, so uh, Patrick Ewing gets a lot more credit than uh, Lavar does in this setting. So for that reason alone, I do want to collect a pair of uh, OG colorway Ewings, but we'll leave it at that. Next, the Converse Weapons. Now, this is another pair, coming back to the uh, Converse pairs here. I would love a pair of Converse Weapons in the OG Magic Johnson colorway. So if you don't recall this magical advertisement that showed uh, Converse uh, displaying Magic Johnson and Larry Bird pitted against each other, both holding Converse Weapons, Obviously, Larry Bird holding his pair, Magic Johnson holding the Lakers-inspired pair, standing up against each other's shoulders. This was just fucking badass as fuck, in my opinion. And in my case, I would take the Magic Johnson pair because, in my opinion, Magic Johnson was just better than Larry Bird, period. That's just my opinion. But I have so much fucking respect for Larry Bird. He was such an incredible player. If you've studied the NBA, if you've studied basketball history, you cannot overlook Larry Bird. He was the shit. Plain and simple, there's no debate. If you debate it, you don't know basketball. I'm sorry, that's just, that's just facts. Regardless of all that, I can't have two pairs of Converse weapons. I mean, I could, but I'm not going to. So if I'm gonna pick one, I'm gonna pick the Magic Johnson, Lakers inspired Converse weapons. And not just for that reason, but for a second reason, actually. And the second reason is Kobe Bryant actually rocked this pair during his sneaker free agency period between when he left Adidas and signed with Nike. So all those things considered, Lakers being my favorite team, Magic Johnson being, in my opinion, the greatest, if not the second greatest Laker of all time, next to Kobe Bryant. Kobe Bryant and Magic are just like 1A, 1B. And I can't even say who's A and who's B, but regardless, that's not the debate today. The point is, Nike, stop fucking around and bring back the Converse Pro Leathers and bring back the Converse Weapons and the Magic Johnson colorway. Stop fucking around with this Jumpman bullshit. I don't have time for this bullshit, okay? Next, next, next. On that note, the Converse Pro Leather in the Dr. J colorway. Now, Michael Jordan had his pair. I already went on a rant about this with the Michael Jordan bullshit that's being released. We're not even gonna go there again because I'm already fucking angry, but the Pro Leather in the Dr. J colorway, please release both the Dr. J and the Mike. Actually, you know what? Yeah, now that, I, now that I think about it, please release the Dr. J and the Michael Jordan pack at the same time. Let everyone fucking dive for that Michael Jordan pack so that I can comfortably cop the Dr. J colorway for retail. That's all I ask. Okay, Nike, please grant me that wish. Please! I just can't believe you did that dunk. Oh, especially on my Lakers. Holy shit. Honestly, that may be the greatest dunk of all time in my opinion. Rivaled with Vince Carter, Dr. J's dunk was just, oh my God, man. I, I can't believe it. I can't believe that was an actual dunk in an actual game. That was just incredible. Anyway, we're moving on. Next. Uh, oh, the <laughs> speaking of the Lakers and the Showtime era, the New Balance uh, James Worthy signature pairs. And this is a hilarious story. The fact, <laughs> the fact that New Balance prided itself on never endorsing anyone specifically. And then, of course, this first person they endorsed. I believe it was the first person. Don't quote me on it. Um, 89% confident that it's the first person they ever endorsed and let alone got his own signature sneaker. The hilarious part here is shortly after that million dollar deal, he got caught with a hooker and his deal got stripped. So I think that's a hilarious story in my opinion. No one even remembers that about James Worthy. When I learned about James Worthy and uh, learned more about James Worthy, that prostitute story never came up. The only context I learned about that prostitute story was in the context of learning about New Balance. So. I think that's incredibly hilarious, but I have less of a threshold to being offended than a lot of other people, so itty woody. But anyway, especially this particular photo where <laughs> I imagine that's his wife. <laughs> I imagine that's his wife in the photo looking at him like, bitch, is you serious? Oh God, that's so fucking classic. I don't know. Anyway, I, I, I hope to God New Balance retros that. I could totally see why they wouldn't, but I pray to God that they do. 
That's all I'm gonna say. Next, the Nike Lunar Racer. So I believe if my homework has been done correctly, the Nike Lunar Racer was the first time Nike had introduced Lunar Lawn technology to Nike sneakers. So I would love to have that inaugural model, uh, but it's just impossible to find at this point. I've looked on eBay, I've looked on all the resale sites. It's just not like a popular hype model. So of course it's not gonna be for sale and any runner that's running them has already run in them. So it's kind of like, you know, whatever. But hopefully some kind of anniversary edition whenever Nike decides to wise up and like, you know, actually put out shit we wanna buy. Anyway, we'll leave that alone. Next. Oh, Gucci. Let's let's switch it up to the high end folks. Gucci, Gucci. The Gucci Tennis 84s. Uh, this is a classic pair. This is what inspired the uh, Jay-Z line of sneakers with Reebok. Uh, this is what gang bangers and everybody else wanted to rock back in the 80s and i would love for gucci to put the shit out not any of this coral snake bullshit which is hilarious because i actually love coral snakes i think coral snakes are the shit uh but these gucci ostentatious patterns are fucking getting on my nerves like i don't have time for that shit on my sneakers put that shit on the graphic tees keep it off the fucking sneakers okay michelle yeah i know your name ugh Yo, I love you, Michelle. <laughs> You're fucking crushing it right now. Let's be real. Next, the Adidas Americana. I just love that red, white, and blue, red and blue contrasting stripe pattern for an Adidas trainer. I think it's just OD. I can't wait to have it retro, hopefully someday. Ideally with minimal hype, if not any hype, and I can just cop it and have labor after. Okay, moving on, next. The Anatsuka Tiger Tai Chi. So obviously Anatsuka Tiger was the parent company before ASICS became ASICS. Now they still operate separately for some reason, at least as far as websites go and branding and whatnot. But now with that said, the Tai Chi model was the model that not only Bruce Lee wore, but what Uma Thurman wore in Kill Bill. And if everyone remembers that famous scene where Uma Thurman's walking along the platform and we see the soles of her feet showing that uh, fuck you pattern on the on the outsole. I don't give a shit about getting that exact pair. I really don't care that much. Plus, I think it's kind of tacky to own that shoe. It's great for the movie, but to own it would be kind of fucking silly. Uh, instead, I would love to own just a pair of Tai Chi's in that colorway. Now, I was able to find a pair of Tai Chi's in that colorway available on eBay, but it's like this limited edition Bruce Lee sign pair, which I really don't care. I don't want this big Bruce Lee signature on the side of my fucking shoe and paying 500 bucks for the special edition release. Like just give me a general release with that colorway, with that silhouette. Like I'm not asking for much here, okay? Okay? Uh, <laughs> anyway, okay, I, I've rambled enough about that pair. Okay, next. Adidas Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, the greatest scorer in NBA history, the most unstoppable move of NBA history. Eh, eh it doesn't matter. I just, I just really want the shoes. Anyway. Now, next up, the Adidas Micro Pacer, the first shoe ever with a computer in it. Are you kidding me? This is insane. This is OD. Why wouldn't I want this? On top of the fact that it was part of the inspiration based on its silhouette to influence the Adidas NMD, arguably the sneaker of the year of 2016, Granted, acronym probably kind of took that title, but it is what it is. But yeah, the NMD made waves. I mean, for a sneaker that had no celebrity co-signers to just swarm the internet and swarm sneaker culture so hard, says a lot about a sneaker. I can't name the last time a sneaker did that with no celebrity co-signers. I don't think we talk about that enough now that I think about it. But regardless, we're not talking about the NMD. We're talking about the Micro Pacer. You gotta have it when it re-retros. I hope they come up with some kind of special packaging. Wex, I'm putting you on alert. Get that shit done, fucker. Thanks. Beep. Now, on that note, Adidas High Tops, and there's a bunch of them. I can't even remember all the names. There's the Forum, there's the Attitude, or the Altitude, I can't remember. I'm just gonna like put up a bunch of pictures right here of different uh, uh, Adidas High Tops. I, I want all of them. They're all great. I have the top tens, and those are fucking fantastic. Fantastic. It's great retro vibes, still great modern appeal, but uh, but very clear that they weren't made for 2018, and I love that. So uh, you got to bring back the other shits. Next up, this is very important actually, the New Balance 1500 Blackbeard. 
Okay, there was only 99 pairs of these made, I believe, and I couldn't find a pair. I was so angry I couldn't find a pair. Crooked Tongues, one of the greatest sneaker blogs, sneaker centers of our uh, lifetimes, and uh, with the passing of Gary Warnett, really sad time. I was able to cop a pair of New Balances that uh, Crooked Tongues made in their inaugural debut with New Balance back in 2004 in the Flimby Made in England uh, factory, but I would absolutely adore having one of those 99 pair of 1500, New Balance 1500 Blackbeards. Uh, granted, there's only so many that I believe would fit me. Uh, and what makes me even more angry is the fact that I found a pair on eBay and you know how you like find a rare pair of sneakers on eBay, but you click on it and you see, oh, it's already been sold, but do, would you like to look at the original listing? It's like, bitch, do I want to be teased? Do you think I enjoy being teased? But of course I clicked on it, right? And uh, it was my size and it was sold in fucking July. Like if I had just known about it a few months earlier than I had ever heard it existed, I would have owned those motherfuckers. And instead I'm sitting here like a cuck. So, uh, and then get this. So I, I go on to the UK's eBay site and I search Blackbeard, hoping I can find this pair. And it pops up, available for sale, size 11. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. And I click on it and I'm like, please, 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 please include the box. Please include the box. And of course I scroll down and it doesn't include the box. And I had my heart sink so deeply. Ah, fuck. Anyway, <laughs> um, so yeah, I guess in the future, if someone decides that they have a pair of black beards sitting in a 10 and a half, 11, 11 and a half, 12, even a 10, to be honest with you. And if you're just fucking sitting on that shit and you're not going to wear it and you're just keeping a death stock because you're collecting like that. And then one day you need to buy a house or get married and you want to sell it. Please just sell it to me. Please, 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 please. I really need that. I really need it. Anyway, a pair of OG Jordan 1s from 1985. I would love to have it just to have it. Uh, the problem is I feel like if I own that, then I would suddenly want to own a pair of 94s because I have a pair of 01s, I have a pair of 2013s, I have a pair of 2016, 17s, but I don't own a pair of 94s or 85s. So uh, I feel like if, if I keep advancing in my uh, collecting, I'll meet people who have them available that would be willing to part with them. But I feel like at this rate, it's probably impossible to, to come across those things. Unless I come across it in a garage sale, which I'd be more than happy to do, but I'm not counting on it. All right. Next. On that note, the Nike Air Ships, the original shoe that was banned by Nike for its red and black colorway. Uh, to be honest with you, I'm not super impressed with that shoe. I wouldn't be sad if Nike ever retroed that shoe. Um, and to my knowledge, I believe the molding and the uh, creation of that shoe is almost impossible now because they got rid of the mold. So I'm really not too mad about it because the, the whole story around the band shit is just quirky as it is so i'm really not sweating it it's really not that pretty of a shoe but if they were to release it you best believe i would go out of my way to cop that shit all right next and this is also kind of cheating but the yeezy air max 180 sample if someone were to part with it or be able to gift it to me or have it available for sale i would probably jump on it just to say i had it but then i would be on the quest for the hirachi now the hirachi and the uh air max 180 both were sample pairs they weren't released to the public so the fact that i don't have them doesn't really bother me that much as far as my yeezy collection i pride myself on collecting at least one of every silhouette but i don't have the 180 and i don't have the uh the uh the hirachi now again i'm not sweating it but if i were to get one of the two then I would start sweating getting the other just to say I have the complete set. And now my memory card is full, so we're gonna tough the rest of this out real quick, okay? So just to list the rest of these off, I really wanna get this video over with because I think we're rambling already. British Knights Ratchet Tech. Now, this was my first pair of sneakers ever, I believe. I was in such love with these sneakers. Now, the British Knights Ratchet Tech, I believe it was called back in the day. I don't think they make them anymore. I don't even know if British Knights is still around, but British Knights was Oh, loudy. And I love the sneakers. I love the way they looked, but I got made fun of so hard in those sneakers in elementary school because it wasn't Nike, it wasn't Adidas. Itty, what itty. 
so you know I got I got roasted but uh, if they were ever still around and were able to be retro best believe I would cop that shit holy fuck in retrospect I think they were so OD looking and as a kid obviously they wouldn't fit me now but if they did fit me now and I still had them Believe me, I would rock them. Those shits looked so good. They were completely blacked out, triple black, and they had this ratchet tech technology where you, the strap goes into a buckle, but the strap itself is like ratchets with like spikes on it. It was incredible. I, I oh, so, such a mean mugging look. We'll never know, we'll never know, but it be worded. Anyway, to wrap up the list, we got only a few left. Um, oh, the, New Balance 320. Now the 320 was the first New Balance shoe. Now New Balance has been around for over a century, like well over a century. But the first New Balance shoe to feature the N logo, the classic N logo we all know of, uh, that only came out on the uh, 320 model. And they haven't retroed it since. I don't know why it would be a fucking cash grab as fuck, especially for sneakerheads these days, but it is what it is. Uh, but the minute they retro that in that beautiful blue colorway, I cannot wait to cop that shit, okay? Along the same lines, the New Balance 620, the first running shoe that costed $50. Now at the time, I forget what year it, uh, it came out, but the year it released, $50 for a pair of sneakers was unheard of. And this was the first pair of sneakers to cost $50. And they had the balls to do that, do you know why? Because they were so confident in the quality of their sneakers, they were like, yo, Fuckers are gonna buy this shit, okay? So we're gonna release it for 50 bucks because that's what it's worth, and people bought it, okay? That's the 620. If they ever retro it, best believe I'm gonna cop that shit, all right? Next, the uh, New Balance 992. This was Steve Jobs' favorite uh, favorite sneaker. That's all he wore was 992. So if they were ever to, honestly, this is a great idea. They should market a Steve Jobs anniversary related New Balance 992, and they could release it with a new iPhone coming out, or Steve Jobs' death anniversary, or birth anniversary, or something. Like, just fucking... It's really not that hard. I literally just came up with that right now. Like, y'all could do that, New Balance. Like, team up with me! I, I, I don't even want profits, I just want a free pair of sneakers, okay? So, if you can do that with the pair of 992s, let me know. Size 11, baby. But anyway, think about it. Think about it. If you made it through this last part, especially with the shitty audio, I appreciate you. But with that said, uh, you know, more on the way. So thanks for joining and we'll see you in the next one. We out.